Christine Marie Paolila, born March 31, 1986, was a native of Long Island, New York. For the first few years of her life, she lived here with her mother Lori, a stay-at-home mom, her father Charles, a construction worker, and her older brother. Sadly, when Christine was just two years old, her father was killed in a construction accident. From here on, her life was a difficult one. Following the death of her husband, Lori Paulia began abusing drugs and eventually lost custody of her children to her parents. Having to suffer from the loss of both her parents was difficult enough for the young girl, but soon after, while still in kindergarten, Christine was diagnosed with alopecia. This resulted in the loss of her hair, eyebrows, and eyelashes. Due to her hair loss, Christine had to wear wigs. She also had poor vision and wore thick glasses. Her appearance made her a target for cruel bullies in her class, having a big impact on her self-confidence. Christine was eventually reunited with her mother, who had overcome her drug addiction and remarried. The family then moved to Clear Lake City, Texas, a suburb of Houston, for a fresh start. Christine enrolled at Clear Lake High School. Now an adolescent, Christine began to wear heavy makeup and unflattering wigs. Still, the kids were relentless and called her horrid names. Things would take a turn for Christine, though, when two popular classmates befriended her and took Christine under their wing. Their names were Tiffany Rowell and Rachel Coloroutis. The girls helped Christine to improve her appearance and fit in with the other students, and by 2003, she was even voted Miss Irresistible by her school's student body. That same year, Christine, who was now 17 years old, had also begun a relationship with 21-year-old man named Christopher Lee Snyder. However, her mother and stepfather disapproved of Christopher, as did her friends, Rachel and Tiffany. This was mainly due to his drug use and extensive criminal record. Unfortunately, it would appear that they had good reason to be concerned, as Christine increasingly began to use various drugs throughout her relationship with Christopher. He also began to isolate Christine from her family and friends and was abusive towards her. According to Christopher's family, the relationship was doomed from the start. They cited the vicious arguments the couple frequently had. One even resulted in Christine spending the night on the front lawn of his family's home, threatening to kill them all. Still, Christine stubbornly refused to leave Christopher, a decision that would have tragic results. On July 18, 2003, Christine and Christopher drove over to Tiffany Rowell's home in Clear Lake City, Texas. Also at the home was Tiffany's boyfriend, Marcus Priscilla, Marcus's cousin, Adalbert Sanchez, and Rachel Colarutis. The group were hanging out together and socializing when Christine and Christopher had arrived with the intention of simply stealing drugs from the house and leaving. But the evening took a dark turn when Christopher began arguing with Marcus. The confrontation escalated, and without warning, Christine and Christopher began shooting at the group. It's not clear who killed who, but the couple fired at least 40 rounds in total. All four of the victims had numerous bullet wounds. Rachel and Tiffany were both shot in the crotch. Adalbert Sanchez had moved to Clear Lake to get away from violence on the north side to change his life around, and he had only been in Clear Lake for about a week or two before losing his life. Rachel Colarudis initially survived the onslaught and began to crawl through a puddle of her own blood to reach the phone and call 911. When Christine saw that she was still alive, she began viciously beating her to death with the butt of a revolver while Rachel cried out, Why? Less than an hour after committing the murders, Christopher drove Christine to Walgreens so she could clock into her job at the makeup counter like nothing had happened. Just after 6 p.m., an 18-year-old friend of Tiffany's drove over to her house to join the group, but after knocking on the door, she got no response. She noticed that both Marcus and Tiffany's vehicles were there, but they were also not answering their phones. Eventually, she decided to let herself into the unlocked door, and after being met with a bloodied scene of her lifeless friends, she ran screaming from the house and called the police. An investigation into the murder ensued, but the only evidence police had were descriptions of the suspects who were seen walking to and from the home by neighbors. For three years, 
the cold-blooded Clear Lake massacre went unsolved. Christine and Christopher broke up in 2004 after he went to jail for stealing a car. She entered rehab in Texas, where she met her soon-to-be husband, Stanley Justin Rott. The two tied the knot in March 2005, and Christine went on with her life as though nothing has happened. Four months later, however, on the second anniversary of the murders, Christine came across a news report about the unsolved case on TV. When she saw the composite sketches of the suspects, she confessed to Stanley that she and Christopher were responsible. Sticking by his wife's side, the couple went into hiding, living out of a motel room in San Antonio. For the next eight months, the couple holed up in the room, shooting heroin and cocaine. A year later, police received an anonymous tip. The caller said he had met Christine in rehab and she had confessed to him that she had murdered the four victims in the Clear Lake Massacre. Police tracked Christine down and arrested her on July 19, 2006. Stanley was also arrested as police found 70 vials of heroin in the couple's room. However, once in custody, he told the police about his wife's confession, and he revealed to them a shocking twist to the story. Christine had told him that she saw Rachel still clinging to life and decided to finish her off by bludgeoning her friend to death. When interrogated by detectives, Christine shifted all the blame onto her former boyfriend, Christopher. She claimed that it was him who came up with the idea to rob her friends, but their plans went terribly wrong. Christine was charged with capital murder. Meanwhile, Christopher Snyder, who was still at large, found out about the arrest warrant against him and took his own life. His decomposing body was found in a heavily wooded area in Greenville, South Carolina on August 5, 2006. It was later determined that he had overdosed on prescription medication. On October 13, 2008, Christine Paulila was convicted of four counts of capital murder. As she had been a juvenile offender at the time of the killings, she was spared the death penalty. The following day, she was sentenced to life in prison. Christine Paulila is incarcerated at the Christina Melton Crane Unit in Gatesville, Texas, and will be eligible for parole in July 2046, when she will be 60 years old. Christine has never apologized for the killings, and she has never given a motive. However, psychiatrist Gail Saltz believes that her actions were driven by envy and jealousy towards her popular friends. Christopher Snyder's sister Brandy agrees that jealousy was the motive for murder. She has since stated, I remember her being intensely jealous. There must have been some underlying jealousy between Paulila and Kolarudis. When I saw photos of Kolarudis, I knew instantly. She was very beautiful.